Morning, morning. Thank you very much. I am very honored to be here, in fact. Maybe it doesn't look like, but uh, uh, I mean, we in Baltics and it's up north, so we are very kind of uh, calm. And um, well, Ortis, Ortis is a gem uh, from Baltics being more expressive. Um, yeah, but uh, I'm really glad uh, since uh, Poland has a really, at least uh, from what I can see and uh, what, from what I know, Poland has a really well-developed kind of uh, uh, um, ga game designer community and game community in itself. Uh, so this is something, uh, uh, yeah, exciting for me. Uh, I will tell you uh, kind of who who we are, what we do, what we've done, what what our plans are, and uh, in the end, uh, kind of not in the end, but during the whole presentation, obviously. Uh, well, it would be great if you also kind of ask questions, so we kind of uh, and you can interrupt me and uh, ask anything about uh, uh, in the middle. In the well, yeah, or yeah, I think. Like this. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So, um, it doesn't work. Maybe on off, sorry. Okay, okay. try yeah. this. Oh. Okay, so um, <coughs> we funded uh, the, f the company in 2004 and it started because of one game. Uh, well, similar as in Poland, I guess, in Baltics also, like the gaming culture wasn't there before, yeah, well, more than 20 years ago. Uh, and uh, it all started with, uh, with Catan, the English copy of Catan, which a friend of mine uh, brought uh, from the States. And we played the game uh, in, uh, in, in, we played the game like for more than 24 hours. I didn't go to work and, uh, and it was kind of mind blowing how a board game can do something how it can impact um, and uh, so we decided that we should localize it uh, have the rights and uh, we got the rights for uh, first uh, Latvia uh, then Estonia and Lithuania and started basically um, localizing popular games in uh, in Baltic countries um, uh, so we started with distribution and localizing uh, later on in 2007, uh, we felt that we want to be closer to consumer. Uh, we opened our first, it was actually one of the first uh, board game stores in Baltics, uh, and we opened uh, uh, that in Riga. Um, in 2011, we started publishing. Uh, in 2015, when we felt that we already have uh, quite competitive uh, Inter on, on the international level games in our hands, uh, I went to the States, we opened a um, uh, company there and started also uh, selling directly there. Uh, in 2018, we uh, co-invested in a Finnish startup, which is, um, uh, uh, well, the company is called uh, Play More Games, but it's, uh, it's the app Dized that, uh, that lets you skip the rulebook, basically. Uh, in 2019, we acquired a Lithuanian uh, company with uh, six stores, and currently we have 14 stores all over the Baltics, uh, board game stores. Uh, and, uh, and in this year, in a month, we're opening a uh, factory in Riga, uh, and we also uh, have plans to do something uh, in the digital area. Uh, end of this year, early next year. I'll, sh I'll show it more. Uh, our stores are mostly in shopping centers and they are uh, kind of, uh, uh, yeah, children, family type, but uh, in each country there's one like a kind of core store that also does a lot of uh, um, uh, game, uh, more gamers games. Uh, publishing started in 2011, but uh, the, the big kind of jump for us uh, was because of these uh, little figures. We can uh, say thanks to Reiner Knizia, uh, basically his game Honigbinchen. Uh, these are the pieces that we took when developing something else that we had to... We just, we, we just 
needed pieces to play around. And uh, uh, we started playing around the table uh, and uh, playing catch kind of with those pieces, flicking those pieces around. Uh, and uh, first the board, the layout, the setup was kind of, the setup was incredibly painful, kind of. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, uh, with these boards. And uh, I have always dreamt of using kind of boxes more uh, for the game. And so uh, I had the idea of using boxes actually as, as the field. And uh, I remember that, oh, well, we, we were four of us who were developing that game. And yeah, everyone was very skeptical about it. Uh, but uh, yeah, it came out uh, uh, pretty well. And uh, well, this is the this was the kind of uh, beginning of high school. Its former name, uh, Fishoff, uh, which wasn't. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So we launched the game in 2016 at UK Games Expo, uh, and it was uh, well before the launch. Already, we felt that it will be a success, um, and uh, we launched. It was sold out on the first day. Uh, we got the best uh, children's game award, uh, and uh, the basically every fair that we went to, it had a, a success. Like yeah, it was very successful. So high school is definitely kind of uh, the biggest um, uh, game for us, uh, and obviously the, the the biggest kind of. The biggest uh, dream for game designer, is, well, for many maybe, but uh, at least in the family range, is, is to be nominated for uh, for uh, Spiel des Jahres, which is uh, well, yeah, I don't have to tell you. Well, it is the biggest award, and uh, and we were very glad to be nominated uh, for uh, Kinderspiel des Jahres, and we also won won the award in 2017. And the game was actually designed by. Uh, four of our uh, employees. Um, making that game put us uh, kind of uh, kind of more as a more serious publisher uh, 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 around the world and the game itself as well we were building on the uh, on the uh, on the IP continuing the line uh, and uh, this is something that uh, that was kind of, yeah, we we're thinking wh where to go, and uh, of course, uh, well, it's next, yeah, and ne next, uh, so this level. is next level, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we did a Kickstarter early this year for, for this one, uh, it was successful. Uh, it's a totally different theme, so iSchool basically, we developed the game not as a children's game, but it came out as a children's game just because of the theme because uh, uh, the game itself is very competitive. Uh, we actually had uh, also kind of national championships and, uh, and, uh, and the world championship. Uh, but uh, Iron Forest is the next uh, kind of next level flicking game uh, that is coming out uh, next, next year. Uh, as, as a company, we, we always kind of uh, try to also support uh, community but, and organize kind of events locally and internationally. Because um, it's, 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 I mean, we do what we like and we love uh, uh, kind of what we do and we want to support people that are in the same and game industry i think we call we all can agree that is a very uh well yeah very friendly uh yeah. place and environment yeah to work in uh how we work on the international markets is we work kind of uh, game by game so we uh, we have uh, partners in more than 40 countries and like in Germany or Japan, uh, for example, we have, well, for each game, uh, a different partner. Uh, so we don't have, uh, well, maybe in, in few it's other cases, yeah, yeah, where we have uh, one distributor for the, for the whole line. Uh, the US and Europe markets, obviously, are very uh, kind of uh, different. 
um, and uh, that being said, actually we come from a small country. I mean, Baltics is a very small market. It's uh, six million people, and uh, when we started localizing games, we always tried to localize that, uh, those games in four languages. So uh, Latvian, Estonian, Lithuanian, which are completely different languages, uh, and Russian, because we have a lot of uh, Russian-speaking uh, uh, people. Uh, and uh, so with that experience, starting in kind of three small, very difficult small markets, uh, um, developing and publishing games is also, I mean, that, that's an angle that we look at, uh, we try to kind of work on games that are multilingual, that are easy to adapt to, uh, to different markets. Uh, uh, and uh, so in US, for example, US market is totally, uh, well, it is different because the longest chain is uh, from a manufacturer to consumer. Uh, well, yeah, one, two, three, four. So there are four uh, middlemen, basically, until the game comes to the market. Uh, so we, as a publisher, we, or, or Currently, actually, our line is represented in North America by, by one company. So that, that our representative, they sell to uh, companies like, uh, for example, PSI, who, sell, who, who do sales and fulfillment. They also sell to distributor, and there are three, five kind of major distributors in the States. Uh, they sell to retailer and then to consumer. O of course, I mean, uh, Amazon is, is, a, is a big big part of the market currently. Uh, and uh, uh, that shortens the chain. But the, that long, well, I think there will be definitely changes in that kind of long chain. And probably in future, not only in the States, the chain will kind of definitely shorten itself uh, and uh, another thing that is kind of to consider if you're signing a contract with the US uh, based uh, publisher most of them I would say vast majority is uh, um, basically yeah orienting orientating themselves only on the US market so I would uh, say that it is wise, maybe kind of, yeah. I mean, men, not, not many publishers really care about Europe, European market. Uh, that's, uh, uh, then for the, um, for the, uh, so die, do, how many of you know what die is this? Or, uh, okay. Um, yeah, that's that's uh, uh, kind of. I I myself uh, I also I have to admit I hate reading the rule book, and uh, it is always better if somebody explains it to me. And uh, this uh, this kind of solves that problem and is scalable. So. Uh, so it's basically an app, uh, which is also web-based, uh, where it leads you through the first game. It not, not only shows you kind of the rules, but it leads you through the first game, like a demo, uh, demo person, similar to. Uh, then uh, when COVID started, uh, when COVID started, uh, sorry, this dice. The, yes. Is this like uh, um, available internationally? And yes. It yeah, it's a Finnish start. Well, it's a Finnish startup based in Finland, Helsinki, and uh, they um, they have tools and they have outsourced teams that create those tutorials. Okay. So we once we publish game, all of our games are immediately there. I mean, mm -hmm. how I see. Well, yeah. And and. Probably, I mean, there definitely will come a point when there will be a game with uh, without rules. 
I mean, not all type of games, obviously, but uh, but uh, and this this is also kind of uh, well, it saves costs, and uh, and it is uh, like you can have all the languages at once, mm -hmm. like it's uh, very. Uh, um, yeah. Um, and uh, on the so when COVID when COVID started. We were, uh, I mean, obviously, I don't have to tell you, the whole community was, the board, the whole board game community was uh, kind of, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we, we couldn't play games, we couldn't play games, we couldn't play tests, we couldn't play games. So uh, what we were trying to, so, uh, we started uh, kind of uh, Facebook Live sessions with different kind of uh, people from the game industry and we were trying to find a way how to create a game over a video conference uh, like over over live zoom situation. over yeah yeah live situation mm -hmm. um, and we had uh, six or seven uh, weekly panels and uh, there were many great ideas but uh, it was always the obstacle always was the uh, kind of the limitations of the video conference platform. So we can't control, I mean, we can only share screen or we can only, uh, uh, well, yeah, there, there are limited things that we can do. So, um, and uh, that's why we started to think that we would want to create our own video conference platform for games. Uh, and this is something that uh, is basically uh, almost uh, ready. Um, uh, so we have joined together with a couple of IT companies that have uh, very good experience in video uh, kind of conferencing. And uh, so we have created a platform where we or the game can control each player's audio and video kind of signals separately uh, and this allows basically well first it allows to create new type of games that use audio and video signals in the game mechanics so we can and that's something we can so you mean uh, that, that uh, on the voice i can push uh, for example palm on something no sorry it's ah on on the voice yeah by the voice sorry you can push. Yeah. You mean? <laughs> sorry, my English is not so. Yeah, no, but no. I try. Okay. So uh, explain you with my question. Voice so, commands. Voice commands. You mean voice commands? Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Voice commands is also a thing, of course. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But uh, what I mean is, uh, um, we can. Well, let, let's imagine there are ten players, and uh, we can say that number two hears only number eight, number oh, okay. eight this sees only number three. Oh. Okay. So, okay, so detect you something uh, like, like this, yeah? Like it opens a vast opportunity, well, it's kind of, you're giving out cards, you're giving out information yeah, yeah, yeah. to single player, so it's a multiplayer. <laughs> it's difficult to pick in that situation. Sorry? You can't cheat in that situation because the computer is checking what you're doing. Well. <laughs> <laughs> so you're player seven and nine. <laughs> but uh, but basically, well, it is something that can be used for uh, party games. So what we as publishers currently look like is uh, look for is actually party games, hidden role games, anything that because we see this as a great actually also marketing tool for the physical game. It's not. I mean. Uh, nothing will ever replace uh, physical experience uh, of, of a board game. And if you want, actually, I can show you how the how the platform works. Oh yeah, great. Yeah. Yeah. I have. people who will currently join. I hope they will join. 
So basically you, uh, okay, how, how can you share this screen? Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Hello guys. <laughs> I'm from uh, USA right now and <laughs> I want to uh, play with you uh, with uh, on the game. They should be joining in a minute, yeah. Uh, some, yeah, players from Latvia. Uh, so, basically, wh how you, so this platform is meant to play games with the people you know. So it's like a kind of, it's not, uh, you send out a link, invite link, and, uh, and uh, people can join, and the, all the people who have joined uh, since I am the host, I will be controlling, uh, and they see what I do. And once we play, kind of, uh, then it's uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Uh, so this is uh, Agnese, Arturs, and uh, Janis should be joining. Yeah, but. Um, So cur currently, we, we will be starting actually to use this as a as a as a uh, kind of uh, as a uh, simple video conferencing tool uh, as well. But uh, but for the games, uh, currently we have um, uh, five six games that are already kind of uh, more or less ready to play, and uh, two of them are actually existing IPs of board games of party games that are not our IPs. So just just to be clear, this. Uh, Flockly, Flockly is, is, is the name of the platform. It's not only for brain games games. We're going out also out to other publishers uh, cause, uh, and uh, yeah, trying to agree to have the rights to develop the game for the platform. And for example, for the last game, Catch Catch, which is a game from Mandu Games, it's a drawing game. Uh, we created the game actually within, within two weeks. So, I mean, as you all know, the the kind of process of publishing a board game, uh, well, for us at least, uh, from the time when we sign a contract with a game designer until the game launches, it takes around two or three years, kind of, until the game gets to the shelf. But uh, here, uh, it can be done, yeah, in, in, in much faster, much faster, of course. And it can be used uh, very good as a marketing tool. Um, so Catch Sketch, for example, is a uh, drawing game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, I'll just show. Sorry. I'm yeah. ready to play. Yeah, yeah. Push ready. <laughs> So I will explain you the the rules shortly, and we'll I'll, I'll show you just one round. Uh, so the player with the crown, which is currently me, uh, chooses the level of the difficulty. Let's go with card. And once I push card, all the other people will have a word uh, displayed that they will have to draw, and they will have to draw it as fast as possible. Uh, and the first player who submits the drawing is the first that I will see and have the chance to guess. Uh -huh. So very simple. So I push draw, they see the word, and uh, they are drawing currently. And we will have to uh, guess. Okay. Do you draw with the mice? Yes, with the mice, yeah. Or with the, on, the, on the mobile, with the, on the touchpad. Uh, <laughs> okay, so Arturs was the first to submit. Uh, Yes, honey. Anita. Honey. Okay, we say honey. Is that correct? I correct. Oh. That is correct. Yeah. I so. <laughs> and uh, now we also. 
we we see what the other. Oh yeah, it was too fast. But uh, we see what the. Now it's Yanis who chooses easy of heart, and we. Oh shoot! Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, and we don't have a big steel raise. It's great. Yeah. Okay. Well, Art, Arthur, you you have some skills. Yeah. yeah. Is it a mosquito? Uh, yes, it no, is. So, uh, um, <laughs> but wow, uh, the egg is your mosquito. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. It's uh, Latvian mosquito for those who don't know. That's what it went off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I will not participate in. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you dropped the invisible bridge. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Agnes? <laughs> okay, so uh, just to explain, I mean, um, I will pause, uh, just to explain, so uh, the player who whose drawing is uh, to be guessed, he has a uh, he has the right to choose, did the guesser kind of uh, uh, guess correctly or wrong? So this is how it goes. And then the points are uh, allocated automatically. Uh, so that's that's kind of easy game. Uh, and uh, you, s well, yeah. Uh, oh, you can see the points by the stars at the top. Yes, the by the stars at the top as well. So it, uh, it uh, that's how something goes. The pause. Oh yeah, the network. Okay. Anyway, uh, well, if you hear me, thank you. Uh, if you hear me, you're welcome. <laughs> 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 uh, can we switch back to the presentation? The PowerPoint. Yeah. The PowerPoint. Um, so yeah, and uh, this this is a place where we want people actually. Well, we want those games to be free of charge to be Oops. played. And this this is uh, this is kind of uh, 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 and in in that sense, it also kind of serves as uh, as uh, uh, as a great marketing way for uh, for a physical copy of the game. Um, and. Uh, so, uh, for this platform, we have created tools so that outsourced teams can actually create games as well. Uh, uh, last two games were actually created by outsourced uh, teams. Uh, uh, and uh, we also are planning to kind of, so that everyone who is involved in the game development is, has its own uh, kind of uh, share of the revenue once the revenue is there. because. We're currently kind of thinking of uh, of the ways uh, still, because of course ads uh, ads is one thing. Uh, additional content uh, and, and and different. Uh, things. One question about it, if if you, uh, sure. if I can, yeah. uh, the the way could be shorter game designer without without <coughs> uh, publishers. If you well, the the thing is currently for to develop a game, you need IT team. Uh, okay. And and the mechanics and illustrator. Okay. So these three things basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. What we're thinking of of maybe that we can actually put those parts also together through kind of we can. Uh, but uh, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. But but it's 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 in future in a year uh, or maybe more we'll have easy tools so that even. Probably game designer without IT could uh, develop uh, the games. Uh, another thing that uh, we have um, um, also because of COVID, uh, of all the production uh, issues that we had with China and also also lead times in Europe, uh, um, we were looking for ways how to produce locally, and uh, this is as well. Um, uh, so it's a new company that we are also part of, called uh, Folded Box, uh, 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 that 
so the facility is kind of the opening, official opening is in, in less than a month, but we will be producing uh, everything cardboard, basically boxes, uh, cards, uh, also jigsaw, uh, jigsaw puzzles. Uh, and this is also a service that will be provided to other publishers as a, as a production facility because the capacity is uh, huge, huge there. Yeah. Uh, and one of the first products is actually jigsaw puzzles. At least is 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 a, is a, will be a puzzle line uh, from a Ukrainian uh, artist. Uh, artist. Yes, and and part of the uh, kind of revenue will go to uh, charity foundations uh, in Ukraine. Uh, so to sum it up, or advantages of being small and uh, multilingual uh, kind of I mean yeah the perception of a small and difficult market um, gives you well at least yeah it gives you the ability to scale into other international markets uh, whereas where being safe on a bigger market uh, where you deal only with English language, uh, it, uh, it, it, it is uh, more maybe difficult. Uh, I think we, we, and we, I mean, also kind of uh, publishers, Poland, uh, Eastern Europe, I think uh, um, we're also more flexible uh, in, in, in all, all <laughs> in all the senses. Uh, uh, fast decisions is something that we are trying also to kind of, uh, uh, I mean, being as a small company, we can, and this also concerns kind of uh, our relationships with game designers, we try to give our feedback and decisions uh, fast. Uh, uh, creative, obviously, is, uh, is well, yeah. Uh, thinking out of the box basically is is, is something that th that's the only th way how you can stand out in the whole huge vast amount of games that are coming out uh, and uh, resilient yeah uh, kind of uh, surviving in a small difficult market uh, gives you gives us definitely an advantage to also uh, kind of uh, be more resilient on the international market uh, that's the presentation, but uh, I hope, yeah, that uh, there may be questions.